Hello, and welcome to our November virtual medium format meetup with Hustle Vlad. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Emmy, joining you from the New York area. Today's talk will be about 45 minutes and concluding with the Q&A. So if you have any questions for our artists, please post them in the question pane in the control panel. Today's artist is Clarissa Bonet. Clarissa is a Chicago-based artist who explores issues of urban space in both physical and psychological contexts. Her photographs are in the permanent collection of the Museum of Contemporary Photography, University of Michigan Museum of Art, Southeast Museum of Photography, Museum of Fine Arts, Houston, Haggerty Museum of Art, University Club Chicago, and the J.P. Morgan Chase Art Collection. And she was the winner of our Hasselblad U photo competition last year. Clarissa will be talking about her origins and some of her recent and ongoing projects. It is my great pleasure to introduce Clarissa Bonet. Hi. Hello. Thank you for having me today. Um, I'm really excited to kind of um, speak to you all. So thanks yeah. for inviting me. Oh yeah, thanks for joining us, Clarissa. Um, and uh, where are you speaking to us from today? Um, I'm based in Chicago, Illinois. So currently I'm in my studio here. Um, which is on, in East Garfield Park on the west side of the city. All right, and hopefully you're nice and toasty where you are right now because it's it's freezing in New York today. Yeah, it's definitely chilly here too. Um, yeah, nice and toasty warm in my studio. <laughs> um, now to start off, um, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, so um, I live and work in Chicago. I've been here for the last 10 years. Um, a little over 10 years. Uh, I guess it's been 11 now, but I grew up in Florida um, and I uh, lived there most of my life. Um, went to undergrad school there. Um, I ended up just kind of falling into photography as a really young person. I took a photography class in high school, which is kind of how I got started mm -hmm. in photography. Um, and I was really fortunate to find it at a really young age and knew kind of exactly what I wanted to do and to be an artist. So I just kind of pursued um, a career as an artist, uh, I think starting at the age of 16, which is I know really young for a lot of people. Um, and I um, then went on to get a bachelor's degree in photography from the University of Central Florida and then um, moved up to Chicago, which is why I'm here now to get my MFA at Columbia. That's amazing. Um, so we're going to just take a look at some of your images uh, from your city space project. Um, how did the concept of this project come about? Yeah, this project was really um, inspired by and kind of started from this shift from moving from um, Florida to moving to Chicago. And so when I set out to go to graduate school, I applied to places all over the country. Um, some were big cities, some were not. Um, I, and I ended up here in Chicago. And so I had never lived in a really dense urban environment before. Um, you know, I, I grew up in, in Florida. The last five years I lived at the beach. Um, I could see the ocean from my apartment. So mm -hmm. I was really used to this kind of lush tropical landscape and slow paced uh, way of life and being dropped into the middle of a dense urban environment was completely foreign to me. And so mm -hmm. this project really started as a way for me to explore this newfound landscape and try to understand it and my place within it. And so that's really how the project started to come about, which is just like right when I moved here in 2009, um, I just started experimenting with making pictures about this landscape. And then as it progressed over time, um, the picture and the project started to really form in 2011 and is currently ongoing. So you know, over the years, my relationship to the city has changed and so has the pictures and they've kind of um, changed over time. That's really amazing. And um, would you like to kind of talk about this image right here? Yeah, this image I made last fall, it's called Glimpse and it's really thinking a lot about um, the sense of an anonymity in the street and also, you know, this kind of public private space that both the city and these kind of structures hold. And so 
a lot of the work is based on personal experience and that kind of uh, moment in which you may be walking down the sidewalk and and kind of glimpse inside um, and and kind of see what's inside and maybe make a possible connection to the this individual uh, that may be standing in a window. And so, you know, it's really about this kind of brief and uh, momentary connections that one can be made both on the street and in this kind of, you know, cross between this public and private space. And so, you know, all the work is really thinking a lot about pedestrianism and anonymity and, um, you know, surveillance and public space, private space. All of these things are kind of larger overarching themes in the project itself. Cool. And um, would you like to talk about a little bit about your um, your production process? Yeah, so um, all the work is really um, thinking through the pedestrian experience of place. And so to be really connected to that and to to be in to kind of get inspiration for the photographs, I I go on these kind of wanderings throughout the city. And so I I like to do this as often as I can and usually on days where there's good weather, but I take to the streets and and wander around for hours at a time and it can be you know anywhere from three hours to five hours to seven hours i think is probably the most i've ever done and i just kind of wander around and and uh, let the city push and pull me and that's really you know through these personal experiences is where i get a lot of ideas from um and then on these wanderings i don't typically bring my camera i just bring um my cell phone, um, which I use as like basically a digital sketchbook um, where I can take photographs um, just to remember perhaps where the light is or you know what time it was. Um, I use the GPS function on my phone a lot um, for that. And then also I use my sketchbook. So I have a ton of these sketchbooks. I have like, you know, I usually have two or three of them going at the same time. And once I come up with an idea, um, I often will start sketching and writing out. So like, you know, you'll start to see these very crude photographs and, and sometimes, you know, it's just text. It kind of just depends on, um, you know, how I'm, how I'm thinking through things. And so I'll plan kind of everything uh, kind of out from there. So that's a little bit of like the kind of pre-production process. And then the production itself, uh, once we have everything finalized, then it goes into trying to find figures. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, sometimes I have an idea and I need to find a location, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a lot of um, a lot of pre-production. And then the, the actual shooting is only, you know, one to three hours. It's very quick compared to um, how long it takes for me to kind of come up with the idea, come up with everything. Very cool. Um, let's see. And um, um, can you tell us a little bit about this image? It seems like yeah. there's a whole this image stuff. is called proximity, and um, it's really thinking about the kind this kind of um public space mm -hmm. and um how people can be kind of connected within this kind of shared space of the urban environment, but be disconnected at the same time. And um, this was particularly inspired by the, these uh, smokers that I saw, and I'm not a smoker, but um, I always find it kind of like a slightly strange experience that you can be in this um, big space, all collectively doing the same thing, yet not mm -hmm interacting or connecting with one another and so i just remember that feeling so strange um and thinking that was such a strange thing and um so that idea was found in one plaza which wasn't very photographic so i found this other plaza that that kind of was able to kind of speak to that in a in a maybe a uh, more poetic way mm -hmm. i love it i love the mirroring very interesting yeah, this is just like um, it's light reflecting off of a building behind or across the street, basically gets this um, beautiful light pattern that happens for a brief moment. Oh, not It's like a brief part of time throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Great. And now what will go into a, taking an image like this? This was definitely a really tricky picture to make. Um, I really wanted to make this photograph and I'm standing underneath the train platform. So I'm on the, uh, we have elevated trains here and uh, there's a set of stairs that kind of go up 
um, and then you have like a midway point before you get to the platform. So I'm standing up there photographing down and I knew I wanted to make this photograph with this taxi. This is actually a friend of mine named Katie. And um, I have, this was a, this is one of the earlier pictures in the series where, you know, production, uh, you know, was low and, you know, we don't have a whole lot of money to make these pictures. And so um, basically I had, Katie just flagged down a taxi that we saw. And I said, and I told her, you know, I, I'm talking to her through ear set, like a headphone set. I'm telling her what to do um, while I'm standing above looking down. And I knew I had a very um, brief moment to make this photograph, very short amount of time, because this is actually a very busy street. So I told mm -hmm. her to just go around the block and then have them stop here, let me take a few frames. And then if traffic builds behind them, just keep going. Um, but the taxi guy was like, no, 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 I wanna make sure she gets her good her picture. And he was really great, but then he was blocking traffic. No. So this is when I was shooting film back in the day and um, I loaded it with 220 so I didn't have to change so I, uh, the film as often, so I didn't lose time. But I literally only got one and a half rolls of film shot before um, a police officer came and told us we had to move or he was gonna write us all tickets. <laughs> so um, so this is, I mean, we we do a lot, all of the shoots are kind of done really like, um, you know, on the fly. Uh, I mean, everything's planned out, but um, you know, we don't really have a lot of permits or anything. We just make these pictures. Mm -hmm. But they made for an amazing shot. Yeah, I was very <laughs> lucky to get it um, with only like, you know, one and a half rolls of film. Mm -hmm. um, so what can you tell us about this image? Yeah, look, this is one I also made last year. And last year I was making a lot of pictures and um, kind of thinking it through this kind of fragmented nature of the surface of the city and thinking like we were kind of, well, before COVID going through this like big building boom here in the city. And it always, it's been, I've been trying to make photographs that kind of reference this experience of the unknown, which was what our landscape really feels like, um, you know. Uh, so I found this location, this is actually like this big concrete stairwell. Um, but I loved that if you could photograph it at a certain time of day, it gets lit, but then underneath it just goes to shadow. So it feels like it's almost like dropping off. And so I, I tried to pick this specific point of view to kind of fragment the space a little bit and add a sense of tension. Um, and then of course, she's kind of looking out over something that you don't know what she's kind of looking at, this kind of sense of unknown. Love it. Um, so this image was, um, in particular, was uh, pretty intriguing because I noticed that, you know, many of your images are taken in you know, bright, beautiful weather to achieve, you know, the sharp lines and contrasty shadows. Um, so what was your idea behind this image? Yeah, like this image was really inspired by um, personally being caught in the rain and, mm -hmm. and thinking about the vulnerability of the pedestrian because you know, ultimately this project is thinking about the pedestrian's point of view mm -hmm. in the city. And that's something that I always, I didn't really think about um, and before moving to the city is like, now my life has been different and now I, I move through the space by foot. And so you can't be protected by a car and you have to sometimes just get home and which is the case. And um, I got caught in a really bad uh, rainstorm and um, I was soaking wet and it was like kind of frustrating but also really beautiful and um, kind of magical at the same time it was like in the summer and it was um, warm and beautiful and the sun was like kind of setting so it was like this kind of tension between beauty and and frustration and so I wanted to make a picture about that experience and what it felt like to really be caught in the rain mm -hmm. We definitely experienced that a few times. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so a lot of people from the audience is asking, you know, how much of um, your photographs are organic or and how much is it staged? Yeah, they're all staged. So um, I'm, I'm really, really interested in trying to um, capture or you know, put a very specific kind of emotional or psychological tenor to the image. And so all the images have like a narrative and a story behind them. 
And so they're very intentional and I kind of work more like a painter would where you come up with an idea, you sketch it out and then you kind of make the final thing. So all of them are all constructed. And I, I, my whole entire career, I've been working within the realm of the constructed image. It's just, I change the ways in which I make photographs and approach the photographic medium with every project I do. And do you find um, the subjects, do you find them, you know, randomly or are they people you know? It's like a really big combination of, you know, people I know. It could be a friend or a, a partner of a friend. Um, you know, it could, like at the beginning when I was making these in grad school, it was a lot of grad students. Um, but then now um, as the project progressed, I, I do work with a lot of actors. So mm -hmm. I actually really enjoy working with actors because they can kind of hold their body in a really natural way. Um, but but really I work with anybody. I, I say I'll work with anybody, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have experience. I'll give you direction of exactly how I want you to be. And I've gotten over the years pretty good at uh, making them look very natural um, in terms of having the way people hold their body position. But all the work is ultimately really um, inspired in, and I'm thinking through a lot about the strategies um, street photographers um, use, um, whether it be where they place their body in space, um, where they place the camera, um, all of those things um, reference the act of the pedestrian. So. Um, they're very much inspired by street photography and they're meant to make nod to that medium and to, I mean, to that genre. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what can you tell us about this image? So both this image and the image you showed before um, were really, um, when I was, every year I basically get a kind of a topic or something in my head and I kind of make a bunch of pictures kind of around that and so this particular year I was really fascinated by this idea of mark making in the city and how marks can represent themselves um, intentionally or unintentionally um, there could be the removal of marks um, but how these marks uh, kind of make nod to um, people and pedestrians, although their physicality, their physical body not might not be uh, there in the landscape, but a trace of them is left behind. And so with this particular picture, I was thinking about these kind of ephemeral traces and these spills and splatters that you often see when you walk down the sidewalk. And I always wonder and think about, you know, who was that and um, what happened there? Because sometimes these spills look quite violent, like perhaps they tripped and fell, or maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it wasn't an accident, maybe it was. And so this picture is really about the traces people leave behind. And then, so it's not only this kind of ephemeral trace that you see here, this kind of spill that's happened, it's also the gum as another representation of, uh, a human in space, right? So it's like somebody who spit the gum and then it's like all those people that walked on it um, as well to kind of layer the photograph about this idea of mark making. Very cool. And now technique wise, like how do you capture something like this? So Ooh. this is with the, the X1D and um, I shot this, I was really thinking a lot about how this new like kind of building boom and construction with all these towers going up all over the city and I started to get this anxiety and this sense of um, dread that I'll lose this connect, kind of connection to this beautiful light that we have that's so unique to the city that I that I, I utilize in my work and so um, I, this photograph really came out of this sense of anxiety about that and so I wanted to find a location that made it seem like the sky was closing in uh, mm -hmm. to kind of represent that idea so this uh, is actually something that I drive by. It's kind of close by my my house and it's an overpass. So what you see in the top right corner is the overpass for I-55 interstate. And then the um, what you see in the background of these two figures is a factory building that's um, in Bridgeport. And so I timed it on a day in which um, it was really, really bright and sunny. We actually shot this twice because the first time um, the light was very weak and it didn't have that drama to it. Um, so we reshot it again when the light was brighter and harder. And so basically I'm exposing for, they're standing in a narrow beam of light that kind of comes out. Um, and so they're standing in a beam of light 
and then everything behind them is in shadow and then the overpass is in shadow so with all my work to get that kind of dramatic look is i i expose to the very very brightest point in the photograph and sometimes i'll underexpose a little bit and then basically in post kind of pull those two a little bit more apart to create a little bit more contrast but if you see like a print of this you can see detail in the overpass and stuff um mm -hmm. on the top i don't make it go all the way black um on the on all of it um but you can see like the kind of rafters and stuff like that yeah yeah unfortunately we can't see it through yeah, yeah. Up well, but um so you use um basically all natural lighting for the most part for this series i use all natural light except for like one picture in the series which i just used a strobe to mimic the natural light because it was just too dim um but ev everything else is is natural light so it can become very tricky um planning the photo shoots because the weather does not always cooperate mm -hmm. now um one of your images for city space was just picked up to be a book cover Mm -hmm. How did that opportunity come about? Well, I've, I, over the years, I've been like uh, really fortunate to have the work kind of be online and have like a really big online presence. Um, and then also um, my work, I'm represented by a commercial gallery here in Chicago. And I think just between the two um, gets a lot of visibility in the world. And actually, like it happens, I would say, a handful of times a year, people um, just uh, reach out to me and ask me about licensing images for like a variety of different things and somebody reached out about this particular book um, I had never had anybody ask me about doing a book um, cover before and um, they sent me the story and everything and I thought it would be an interesting fit so we went ahead and did it and it's actually I think the Greek version and the Italian version it's like on multiple different versions in Europe but it's also a book they have it in English print too, but it has a different a different picture on it. Very cool. Um, and many many of our audience is asking, um, what is in your gear kit? Yeah, so um, I kind of have like two separate kind of gear kits. My main gear kit that is my go-to is my Hasselblad equipment. So it's gonna be the X1D and now I have the 907X. So it's, I bring both of those. Um, and then I bring uh, about five batteries. I go through a lot of batteries quickly. So I wanna make sure I don't run out um, because most of the time I'm shooting on it, like location, uh, you can and can't change charge batteries. Um, a bunch of SD cards and then my lenses. So I have the 30, the 45, and the 90 so I have all of those for my system um, and right now I'm using the 135 that I'm borrowing right now on loan from you guys and I absolutely love that that lens and I think it might need to make its way into my gear kit too because now I don't have to stand in the middle of the street to get a shot I can stand <laughs> in the sidewalk so I really mm -hmm. love the 135 so that's kind of in my like main gear kit um, but then I also bring um, a second it depends on what I'm shooting. If I'm shooting my fine artwork, that's all I bring. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm shooting anything else or like any sort of assignment or commission or something, sometimes I'll bring my DSLR kit, which is like a 5D Mark IV. And then I have about four or five lenses for that camera too. So if something requires me to shoot very quickly, um, a lot of frames per second, that's like my backup. But I almost always um, shoot with this, even if it's for any sort of commission work or something like that. Because it has that same visual aesthetic that I'm looking for. Um, and I just like, it just, I like the slowness of it. There's so many things about it I like. So that's my main gear kit, um, is the three lenses and the two bodies. Yeah. And we're really happy to create gear that makes your vision come true. Yeah. So, um, now, um, would you like to talk about a little bit about this, about this image? Yeah, this image is called Swelter, and um, I was just thinking a lot about that really hot um, experience of, of moving through the, the city in the summer and how the sun can be this like piercing, um, almost like burning uh, thing. But it, I think like coming from some place that has very cold winters now, it's like something for me that I very much enjoy. Like 
I really love being really, really hot now. Like when I used to live in Florida, I hated it, but now I just love feeling the sun on my skin and um, being hot and sweaty is, I know it's gross, but I actually just kind of love being downtown and being this pedestrian, but it's also like can be a sense of frustration, but, um, but this is really thinking about the sun in the, in the summer. Um, and then, so he's like, when you see the print, he is sweating and you can see um, sweat on him and he's basically wiping it off of his brow um, in this picture. I love that feeling too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and now why did you, um, why did you decide to make the move to medium format? Yeah, so I used to shoot with a medium format uh, film camera. So I learned on film, um, I learned on 35 millimeter film, printing in the dark room, printing color in the dark room, black and white. Um, then I went to DSLRs um, and then I went back to film again when I was in graduate school. So this image was actually shot on uh, my Mamiya 7 II, um, which is a medium format, I mean, a, yeah, a medium format film camera. And, um, you know, for something like this, I would shoot it, um, then it would take a couple days to get processed. Then once I had enough that were processed, then I would take and make, you know, um, contact sheets. Then I would go get them drum scanned and I would do them myself. And each drum scan was an hour long. And I mean, it's just an extremely time consuming process where I would basically only process my film in the winter. Like I would shoot and then process everything in the winter. And it just became, it's, it was a lot. Um, and so I finally made the switch to digital medium format. And I honestly wish I would have done it sooner. Um, I think that it allows me um, so much more freedom for experimentation. It allows me for instant feedback. Um, it allows me to play more. Um, but it also allows me to work quicker. And I think that's the biggest draw for me is to work quicker, but still have that huge, you know, file, still have the sharpness I want, still be able to make prints because the prints that I make and I show like um, typically are 32 by 40 inches. So I need something that's able to scale large without losing resolution, losing detail. And so that's why I ended up switching um, to digital me medium format and then specifically the x1d because it really reminded me of shooting with my, has uh, my mia 7 and it has that very similar feel in the hand um it's it's small uh it's lightweight it, it, it it's enabled me to make these photographs on the street um like i said a lot of these pictures that i'm making i don't really have permits i don't like to draw a lot of attention to myself and i've through experience and shooting with other cameras over the years, it, some cameras can draw a lot of attention to you in a negative way. And mm -hmm. um, when you're in a you know a space like mostly from security guards or or things like that. But with the X1D, I have felt that because it's a very unique looking camera, just like the Mamiya 7 was. Mm -hmm. people are often more curious than anything. They want to know what am I doing and, and what is that camera? And they mm -hmm. ask in positive questions versus when you take out a big, huge DSLR. Um, I've had people like security guards originally just, you know, I back in the day, like years ago, I would take one out and uh, I remember just doing a test and immediately a security guard came and kicked me out of the plaza, even though it's a public space. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now, I mean, People don't typically bother me, you know, I haven't really had, I mean, sometimes people do, but they, overall, people leave me alone and they're very curious about the camera. So I think there's a lot of positive things about it, but I know that it very, very much mimics my working process I had for a really long time. And that's one reason why I ch chose to go with the Hasselblad system. That's great. And do you, do you still create images with film? No, since switching over, I have not shot much film at all. Um, I pretty much only shoot with my Hasselblad now. Okay. Yeah. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about this image? Yeah, this is called Resting. And um, this picture was just speaking to the kind of um, frustration in the urban space of lack of public space to sit and to rest. And they do it intentionally because they want people to keep moving through space. A lot of um, 
places want to make it uncomfortable for you to sit for a long time or um and so this was just out of pure frustration of being exhausted and on one of these very long walks in the summer where i just wanted to sit down and i found and i tried to sit on this planter and it said um please do not sit here the flowers will thank you later or something like that and i got very irritated by that um so I took a picture of that sign and that was basically what fueled the making of this particular picture. So then I was on a hunt for a location in which um, it was just empty, which is what I felt um, felt at the boat at the time. And I still kind of do, I get kind of frustrated by these, um, the lack of um, public space in the city. Thank you. Um, sorry. And now, um, <clears throat> I have a question from the audience. Um, is there any difficulty using the medium format camera? And how do you overcome, especially shooting in the street? Difficulty? I wouldn't say there's really much difficulty using it. If, if anything, it might be maybe easier. Um, one thing that I always had an issue with when I was shooting with my film camera is um, I would have to manually focus it. And um, when you would shoot with a long lens on that on that system, it was very, very difficult to because it was a rangefinder to to focus. So that was one problem I always got frustrated at. And so with the new system, I would say that it it has I think it's like quicker, it's easier. And for me, like some of the positives are like the focus peaking. It's able to really um, am able to get that sharpness that I want almost every time and like so for me um i w i don't i can't really think of anything that's like difficulties per se in in shooting with that with the medium format system and you've been shooting with the x1d for for quite a while yeah for a little over two years so i got it in like march of 2018 i want to say something like spring sometime around there so about two and a half years i've been shooting with it um hmm. now uh i don't know this is this is kind of interesting i've kind of i've probably experienced that a few times <laughs> um oh yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's a mortifying feeling and that's what i was really trying to encapsulate with this photograph is that uh mortifying feeling you get when when this happens to you and you spill your groceries and you feel like everybody's watching you and so the light in this photograph really acts as this stage um it creates this this stage for this this to happen out mm -hmm. um now this is pretty interesting would you like to talk about this a little bit yeah so um i'm you know oh, over the years like you know i'm I've been really interested in the project really started about this and it, kind of one of the main themes that I was thinking about early on was this sense of anonymity on the street, um, mm -hmm. which is very much in this photograph. But I also start to think more and more recently um, about the structure of the city itself and the choices builders make and um, urban planners and, you know, thinking about the structures of them of the city themselves as meant to mimic nature. Um, and so I loved how um, I timed it so then you really only see the clouds that are reflecting in the sky, um, which is basically almost creates the second sky. So thinking a lot about the structures of the city themselves um, in this photograph. Beautiful. Um, so how does how does the X system elevate your photography? Yeah, I think that um, you know the X system really. It gives me a very sharp um, kind of slick kind of looking photograph um, that I'm like looking for. Um, and it's also, um, I feel like the dynamic range of the camera is really helpful for me as well because I shoot in really, really, really contrasty light, right? So I feel like the image quality um, that's given is just, I don't know it's just beautiful so um the sharpness like there's just so many things about it that um i feel like you know elevate the final photographic print i mean i'm really you know all of these photographs get printed 
um, and shown as prints for the most part. And so there's like a, a quality that I'm looking for that the, the system definitely gives me. I mean, I think the sharpness is like one thing that I was like blown away by. Um, it's sharper than my film for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, just thinking about your overall aesthetic, um, we see a lot of solitude in these images with every, everyone on diverging paths, mm -hmm. you know, looking at shoulders, at windows. Is this, you know, all part of your artistic image, uh, vision? Or what are you trying to say with this series? Yeah, I mean, um, I think that there's a sense of isolation at, for sure in, in the work. And I think that that's directly responded to kind of how I feel um, about the city. And, uh, you know, anonymity is a really big thing. And I, I remember when I first moved here, I'd never been around so many strangers before. And this idea that we can cross paths with one another and never see each other again. And it, it's kind of a strange thing. Um, and so that's a visual strategy I use um, to create a sense of anonymity in the city is by turning people away from the camera to obstruct their face. Um, in that photograph glimpse that you showed at the very beginning, you can only see like half the woman's face and the rest of it is in shadow. So most of the time I don't have figures facing the camera. I have them facing, you know, slightly away, but if they are facing the camera, you can't see their full face to, and to kind of add a sense of anonymity to the fo the project as a whole when you look at it um, over the entire thing. And I think there's a, definitely a sense of quietness and that is a response to this act of pedestrianism, which I feel like is a very lonely, um, a very lonely act. I mean, I'm on the street for hours at a time and I never talk to anybody. <laughs> and I think that really comes through, um, that experience for me comes through in, in the work. Yeah, I think we could all kind of relate to that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this image? Yeah, this one um, is called Fortress. And mm -hmm. um, this actually picture is kind of made at the same time, I, I, the second series that we, we might go into. Um, Stray Light was uh, thinking, uh, kind of made around the same time. And this is kind of like a, a visual response to that and thinking about the structures of the buildings themselves in the city and how they function and how um, pedestrians, like we, I, I feel like we don't really think about the structures in, in the city as being these kind of cities within cities because we can't see inside by day. We can't see what's happening. We just see them as a singular object or a structure, but really there's thousands of, or, you know, thousands and thousands of people inside. And so how this is like uh, called Fortress and I shot it at an angle so you can't see the windows. You just see this solid concrete mass to kind of mimic that idea of buildings being like this kind of impenetrable fort fortress in a way by day and how um, you, know, you disappear into them and then you reappear when you come back out and kind of join the rest of the pedestrians on your kind of commute home. Um, but how your presence is basically, you erased off the surface of the city for a few hours once you enter these kind of structures. Uh, and now I have a question uh, from the audience. Um, cities have a lot of chaos, but not in your work. How do you achieve that? Um, I, you know, sometimes when you zoom out, there's a lot of people around. You just kind of can't yeah. see. Um, I like to shoot on the weekends. I like to shoot in, on Sundays. Um, mm -hmm are my favorite times of day because, or my favorite days to shoot because there's less people on the street. Um, but really I'm trying to hone into very specific things. Mm -hmm. And um, I like to kind of clean the frame in a way, which just like only get you to focus on what I'm thinking about. Um, so I try to take as much visual noise, which is like a lot of randomness out of the photograph. So I, ha I work with at least one assistant every time, sometimes two, depending on, on it. And um, they tell me when people are walking and then I just stop shooting and then we let that people walk by and then we continue uh, what we're doing. Um, I think we kind of went through this in the beginning, but like um, uh, what type of research goes into each of your photographs? Yeah, a lot of it is visual research. It's a lot about 
um, personal experience and like um, being there, thinking about how, um, you know, uh, my experience of place is. But sometimes it's about reading things and, you know, sometimes it comes from reading, you know, an article about urban planning or per perhaps it's mm -hmm. uh, on a book or something like that. And um, so it's, it's kind of like really varies um, for the project. But for this particular picture, um, I was really thinking about how we build cities and um, and about the materiality that we're using and, um, you know, thinking about concrete. And I think I, I read something recently about how we're running out of the sand to build con like to make concrete out of um, because everybody is is kind of paving things over. And so I, I, I was thinking about that and, and thinking a lot about how we kind of bulldoze nature and then pave it back over with concrete and then we reintroduce plant life back into this really artificial environment and that's kind of a strange way of doing things and so I wanted to find a location where all you saw was concrete mm -hmm. and then um, it took me a few months to find this location because when the light goes between these two buildings it lights up these four trees that are on the plaza above me or the plaza that I'm sitting in standing on and I'm looking down over the ledge and then it lights up these trees um, to create this shadow. So this shadow only lasts for about an hour and it kind of sweeps sweeps through this way as the light moves um, between these two buildings. So it took a long time to find this location. So a lot of times I've come up with an idea um, based on something I've seen or based on something I've read and then um, try to find a location to photograph that in that still has that same aesthetic of mine. Um, so a lot of like looking at light and shadow as a way to create this like stage for this performance. Mm -hmm. Now, um, having shot both X1D and the 907X, um, what is your take on both cameras? Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of experimentation with the 907X recently. So when I got it, I was still, I think, in lockdown. So mm -hmm. I was making a lot of pictures outside in my backyard and things like that. Um, I have shot a few pictures on the street with it, um, and then I've also shot it in the studio. So I've shot it in a lot of different um, spots, like different kinds of shoots. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like the X1D for me is one that I will probably continue to stick with on the street because it allows me a level of flexibility um, because it's small, lightweight, easy to hold. Um, I'll probably continue using it for the work um, that we've been talking about. but. With the uh, 907X, I feel like it's, I like using it when it's on a tripod. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit heavier for me. Um, it doesn't have like that grip on the side. I know you can get that grip, but I don't have that grip. Um, <laughs> so for me, it's like easier to handhold because with the city space project, it's really about um, trying to mimic that kind of pedestrian experience. So I like to photograph everything from my height. And so it has to be up to my my eyes to, to <laughs> Um, so I don't really photograph places where you can't physically stand, although it might look like that. And I'm always standing in a plaza or on the stairs or something like that. Um, and if you go to the next picture, I think mm -hmm. uh, I, that one, I just shot this one actually on the street with the 907X. And mm -hmm. I was on a tripod for this, which worked really well. So I think I can use it on the street if I'm able to have a tripod, if, mm -hmm. um, if the light is not directly on the back of the camera. Um, some uh, you know otherwise it's kind of hard to to see so i think that for me tripod use for that camera feels really good but i've also been using it a lot in the studio i like have a setup here of what i'm doing um this afternoon and um i've been using it a lot in the studio so on a tripod using it kind of like a four by five with the ground, ground glass kind of grid up and and kind of using it, it that way but this one I did shoot with the the 907X and the 135 a lens, which is like, I came up with this idea. This is really a, a, a response to what's happening um, right now in our current, um, you know, our current system, like modern day times and how COVID has affected the landscape of the city. Now, do you prefer um, one for any type of shooting versus the other? Yeah, I think I prefer the the X1D for street stuff and then the 907X for more um a more still or static things. So things where I could be in the studio or on a tripod or something like that. 
Um, but I mean, like I could shoot it on the city, uh, probably on the sidewalk if I, if I had the ability to be on tripod, which I don't always have. Um, you know, sometimes I have to be in the middle of the street to get the shot that I want and I have to move quickly. Um, I usually have somebody letting me know and watching out for cars and then I run back to, you know, when cars come. So when I have to do something like that, where it requires me to be very quick, I think the X1D. And then um, we move on to your your other project, Free Light. Um, could you tell us um, about this project? Yeah. So you know, for me, this project is thinking about the nocturnal urban landscape of the city, and thinking about um, you know how I referenced that fortress picture before um, about this kind of city within a city. These these structures are. Um, but then at night, I feel like um, the buildings, like the light emanating from these windows really allows you to kind of see the presence of people. And so, you know, I was also making this work when I was thinking a lot about mark making in the urban space and how this light in the window is a representation, uh, a marking of, of a, a human in space, right? A life, a presence. And so we can't really get much information from that, but we can know that they are there. And I think even this work is, become, I think, since COVID, even more resonant uh, in that regard because everybody's shut inside, but we, we know we're kind of all in this together and being able to kind of um, see that visually in the landscape, although you might not see people on a daily basis anymore, you can look out over the landscape and you can kind of feel the sense of connection to people. And so that's really kind of what I was thinking about when I was making this, this project. And, I, and, and in a way, I was also thinking about this kind of landscape that we've created here by this kind of light emanating from this window and so um, the kind of stray light is what you know the project's called stray light and it's about the light that strays outside of these windows and um and and kind of out into the urban space and and we don't have this real connection to the natural um night sky anymore because of all of this light pollution but we've created this kind of cosmos here on earth and here in the city itself and you can see it when you you kind of look out vastly over the landscape um, and this sense of um, wonder and awe and mystery that's kind of associated with the natural night sky I think is something that you can say and think about uh, the urban landscape as well. Yeah definitely I feel like each window has its own little universe. Like For sure. Um, what is your technical approach for setting up shots like this? Yeah, so these are all actually digital collages. And so when I go out into the field to photograph, and basically what I call is collecting data. So I just go out there looking for windows. So I'm just getting windows. Um, and then I go back to the studio and then I um, start editing them and then putting them into different folders, you know, or I think, yeah, different folders and then color coding each folder, you know, with people in the window, without people in the window, that kind of thing. And then I start to build the collage themselves. But I'm really interested in this sense of illusion too. And so a lot of them look like structures or, or give the um, appearance that they could be a building or maybe they could, you know, you're not, not really quite sure, which is what I'm trying to get at. Because really it's not about um making a actual representation of the city it's really about trying to get the viewer to connect to it on a kind of um emotional level like i want them to feel what it feels like to look at the night sky when they look at the photograph and that's not always it doesn't always happen with a one-to-one -one ratio of like you know going out there and making a photograph um of what it actually looks at night could could vastly fail you. Um, it does not necessarily always um, get to that feeling that you're at. And to, so through, through experimentation, I kind of got to this method of making. So it's a very different approach and process to um, than the last project, but it's really about trying to connect the approach of picture making to the idea behind it. Now, as you continue your series over many years, do you feel freedom to let it change with your own artistic views, or do you feel beholden to the foundation established in the first few images? I, I definitely change it. I mean, I said once I get kind of like a formula in terms of like how to create and move forward with the project, um, 
I set a set of parameters for myself. Um, and, and, and then I move, I, I allow those parameters to kind of flex as the project changes over time. Like with this project, a lot of them uh, were more like the last picture, these kind of very edge to edge to edge um, photographs. And as I've kind of started to make them, I started to also kind of incorporate these photographs, ones like this, where that has this hint of structure to them. Um, but you know they're not quite real at the same time. Um, and so I do allow the work to change with time. Now, um, as we com come to a close, I think one question that can't simply be ignored is, how have you been doing this year? And yeah. Have you started working on any, any special new projects? And you know, how has the pandemic affected your work? It's been a challenging year, um, and um, you know, as an artist and as a person, um, and you know, my work working process has been disrupted greatly by the pandemic and you know my work is made in public space and it's made um, the process of making the work requires me to be in public space for hours and hours at a time and so that's something that I don't necessarily feel super comfortable with right now so I've been not doing it as much as um, I normally would but it has also presented me an opportunity to try to experiment with other modes of making and other methods and and during the lockdown i worked with an artist natalie crick who's in seattle and um, she's a good friend of mine we worked together on a um a piece for a show at the Catherine nettleman gallery that opened this summer and you know working through Nat with natalie really got me to think about the photographic object and the print in a way in which it could fit into my own work and so that in combined with trying to make pictures about our current moment and how to respond to that. I, I did start making some new work here in the studio. Um, it's like kind of a hybrid process between the street and the studio that I've been making. So this is one of the new pictures that I made um, recently um, with the 907X. And then um, the next one, if you want to go to the next one, that's a, a very new one too. Um, so these are two of the new photographs that I've kind of been making that really came out of the pandemic, both the method and my response to it. Yeah, this is like, this is giving uh, a little bit of a different vibe. Um, and I can't wait to see more. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited about it. And I'm, I've been having a, a, a lot of fun making them. Yeah. Now, how do you stay, how do you manage to stay motivated um, during this time? Where do you find inspiration? I've been, I've been trying to keep busy. I feel like that's been really helpful for me, like mentally to just try to make, keep busy. So I've been trying to attend, you know, online lectures and, um, you know, my friends and I started a, a reading group. So we read, um, essays and then we get to about photography and then we get together on um, Skype and stuff or yeah zoom now it's zoom uh, we get together there and and talk about it so I think that that's been really helpful for me um, during this time to kind of keep motivated and keep um, keep inspired now um, that's it with the images um, so before we go into questions from our audience, uh, you can ask us questions by tapping the question mark icon on top on the top right corner. Uh, but before we do that, Clarissa, would you like to tell us a bit about what you have coming up? Yeah, I think like, you know, everything's a big question mark right now, um, you know, especially with things happening in the art world and things shutting down, museums and stuff are shutting down on Friday, um, our governor's shutting them down. So. It's a big question mark, but I'm really looking forward to just kind of um, continuing and pushing and working on this process or this new project um, over the next couple months in the studio and just kind of um, being in here and continue working. I mean, I'm just trying to be in the immediate future and, you know, think about what's uh, just right in front of me for right now, because everything seems kind of very unknown. Yeah. All right, so now um, we'll start taking some questions from our listeners. Um, Murray asks, oh, could you just uh, please repeat um, what lenses you used? Oh, sure. 
My main lens is probably the 90 millimeter lens, and then I have the 45. Um, so those two are my probably my main ones. And then I have a 30, okay. which I haven't really had the opportunity to use a whole lot right, like recently. <laughs> but I, those are my three main lenses. And then the 135, I, I really like. Yeah. Um, let's see. Now, who are your artistic influences? I think they're pretty wide ranging and it depends on like the project that I'm working on. I mean, I'm very much inspired by street photographers, um, generally older street photographers like Ray Metzger and Soul Lighter. Also people like Hannah Starkey, um, you know, constructed, who work in the realm of the constructed image, um, you know, Jeff Wall, Bill Blork de Corsha, those are all like very early influences on me. But more recently on the, the newer work that I've been working through, I've been looking at a lot of um, Hannah Whitaker and uh, Natalie Crick. I think those two people have been really um, influential in, in the work that I'm currently making now. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, how do you take your distinct shooting style and bring that into editorial and commercial work? I think I think a lot of it is about light and utilizing light and and kind of um, seeing how I can use that to elevate the everyday uh, in in work. So I think like my aesthetic is very much like contrasty, um, kind of a little bit moody. And so I think it, that comes from the light quality. So I, I definitely try to think a lot about light um, when getting any sort of like a excuse me assignment based work. Um, yeah, and then also kind of creating this like stage of the everyday, which is what I do in the city space work. Um, and, and the light acts as a, as a means to transform um, that space. And so I, I think that I would try to use those two things. Um, mm -hmm. as, and then like, I also think a lot about um, about the language of photography and how I can use that to push whatever it is that I'm shooting. So um if that makes any sense like thinking a lot about like compression of space or where i'm standing and like that kind of thing um i think a lot about that mm -hmm. okay. um we just have a few more um this one says uh your photos have a lot of deep beautiful black tones uh what allures you about shadows mm. i think I think I'm I'm always trying to get I'm not really interested in an indexical representation of the city. I'm not I'm I'm trying to create um and tap into an experience and or, or mood or a feeling. And I think the shadow acts as a, a way to erase in a way, um, to kind of uh, and the light as a as a way to highlight. And so um it kind of uh I would say it kind of acts as a way to kind of erase parts of, of the landscape and to transform space. And I think that's how I definitely use use shadow. And mm -hmm. shadow can also be an illusion. You know, like the black can be used as uh, an illusion, like in the stray light work. It's like we know we, your brain fills in, you can't see the building, but your brain will fill in fill it in for you. And so, or like the, you know, the windows give the structure. And so, um, yeah, I, I guess I use it as a, as a kind of a tool of illusion and, and, and erasure. Mm -hmm. So have you experimented with uh, black and white photography? I have, I actually learned on black and white photography. So mm -hmm. back in the day, um, you know, 35 millimeter black and white, and I would print in the dark room. So I did that for years and I remember thinking, oh, I'm gonna be a black and white photographer forever. I just loved it so much. And then I found color and then I was like, oh, never mind." <laughs> and so now I've just been working in, in color because color is another tool um, you can use. And so I think about it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and just one last question. Um, as a fellow Chicagoan, what part of the city inspires you the most? Definitely the city center. I, I'm really drawn to that uh, because it's like a really transient space in which um, a lot of people come and go. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I kind of love that about it. Uh, you know, the city center draws in people from all over the place for different and variety of different reasons. And so it's a space in which they all kind of mingle. And so uh, I'm really interested in the city center. So like kind of the loop area, um, that's like one of my favorite places to shoot is like downtown in the loop. We also have amazing light down there, so. Oh, so yeah, I have a oh, just one follow-up question from uh, Benjamin. He's asking, are you shooting at only certain times um, during the day to get your specific um, light aesthetic? Yeah, I mean, I like to shoot in like the harshest time of the day and that can change like throughout the year. Um, you know, in the spring, it might be slightly different than in the summer um, just because of the angle of the sun in the sky. But um, I typically like to shoot, I would say between like 10 and two, like mm -hmm. the time where you're most, you know, in photo school, they tell you to be careful because, you know, mm -hmm. it could be very unflattering and it definitely can be, but I think it could be used in a way, if you know how to break the rules, you can use it in a way that benefits you. So um, the harshest, brightest light I could find, um, ideally on days with no clouds is even better. Now, thank you so much, Clarissa, again, for joining us and sharing your work. Um, to check out more of Clarissa's work, you can follow her on Instagram at Clarissa Bonet and her website, clarissabonet.com. And if you missed a part of this webinar, a recorded version will be available to you on our YouTube channel. And for anything Hustleblot, if you don't follow us yet, we're at Hustleblot on all social channels and encourage you to check out our other webinars available at hustleblot.com slash events. And we have some more exciting webinars planned for this week. Join us for an introduction to the XH Converter 0.8 featuring user experience feedback from portrait photographer Todd Oldham and architectural photographer Sean Conboy. The XH Converter brings new opportunities to Hasselblad photographers with the ability to unlock a whole new set of H system lens capabilities. And we'll take a closer look at Hasselblad's latest firmware update 1.4.0, which adds new functionality for an enhanced shooting experience with the X1D250C, 907X Special Edition, and the 907X50C cameras. And we also have a co-hosted artist talk with uh, Dog Camera, uh, featuring music photographer Paul Natkin. Join us as Paul talks about his illustrious career, his gear kit, and his interesting experience in the music industry. So do check us out. And one last note, there will be a survey at the end of this webinar. We would love to hear your feedback on future webinars and hope you'll join us for our next one. Uh, have a great day and stay safe out there. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, have a good one. Thank you.